Good evening. Welcome to the show. Eid Mubarak to all. I'm Robert Dumas. We're not live tonight because of the holiday, so we're not going to be able to take your calls. But we do have a great show for you tonight. Last week, we were in St. James with the Mounted Branch. This week, we're in Kamuto, where the K-9 unit is headquartered. We were given a first-hand look at the training regimen of the K-9 unit, the officers on four legs who go where their two-legged colleagues can't. <laughs> The Kamuto Barracks is the home of the now disbanded, very controversial Special Anti-Crime Unit. We found out training was as hands-on as you could possibly get. They've built entire replicas of a bar or even a home to provide the most realistic scenarios for the dogs. So first up, we went searching for explosives. <laughs> handler, PC Romeo, there's a report of an explosive device somewhere in this vicinity, hopefully the dog will detect. So this is, this is something that happens prior to the dog entering the facility, yes. this is a, a, a threat level. Normally we have routines for so people for like executives. But there's a visit from a foreign dignitary, our local dignitaries. Any major event like for Carnival, we were at some of the venues, like for Marshall Monday, these dogs would have been at the stadium, make sure everyone is safe. But these are just the routine searches. Sometimes you get a bump threat. This is a demonstration of one of those such threats where you see the handler must clear his area, working forward first before he can even enter the building. You see the handler for safety, the handler would not enter with the door. Okay, so as we see now, the dog is inside on his own. What the dog is actually looking for is scent particles that may come in from if there is anything inside here. The handler has the view of the dog at all times. Right, so when the dog pants, what is that an indication of? No, he is going, but when he's, yes, don't hear him panting. He's a deep sniff. He may have gotten the scent of something. And if you look now, you will see that the dog is sitting by a chair. Right. This is an indication of, of the dog may have gone onto something. Now, for the confirmation, normally before, we used to throw the reward to the dog. But because of changes in how explosive training is done, yes. the dog comes back to the handler where he is rewarded. The dog has indicated the presence of some type of explosive device. At this point in time, when the handler goes back out with the dog, he will tell the bomb technician whose job it is will be to come in and either defuse or disrupt this device. So when the dog actually enters the premises, we discuss that the dog's an officer and is numbered. Yes. So is it at that point, if it's considered an officer, it's just a case of one is more expendable than the other? Unfortunately, Robert, yes. I mean, depending on the human nature, the dogs, everybody loves the dogs. They are close to us, but at the end of the day, unfortunately, they are expendable. So is there a plan to get robotics in place at some point to avoid any sort of officer being harmed? Well, even with the robotics, you still need the dog to detect us away. Sometimes if there's a robot, the robot can come in and detect and carry out this device. Superintendent Hospitalis, how important 
and instrumental uh, these canine officers to overall um, crime in, in Trinidad and Tobago. These play a very specific role, a very special role in fighting crime. The canine officer, who you also call handlers, they work hand in hand with a specific canine. They train the canine and they have to work with that canine. The canine will follow the instructions of the, hand, the handler. Last year, these canines would have recovered over, over seven million dollars in narcotics in Trinidad and Tobago. Over the years, some years it will be more, some will be less. And last year, they also recovered 54 firearms. This year, we are already over that seven million figure. And we only me. COVID-19 is on everyone's mind. What is the virus about? Why is it spreading so quickly? What can you do to prevent it? This is a serious virus and only we can help prevent it from spreading. Find out how and more tips on flattening the curve on Ask the Doctor every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. We will answer your questions live with our special guest, Dr. Joel Tiluxing. Ask the Doctor only on CNC3. Smell, 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 and he will look for the strongest scent, right? And as I said, you have a bit of on top there, so you'll see him drop up here. You'll walk in here, now you'll see the top, and you'll freeze up right here. So you know inside this cover, the, the, uh, the odor is high. If he comes and he freezes up here, you know in this cover, the scent is low. So it does say it has marijuana and coke in here. So the marijuana is in this shed. The coke is in this shed. Marijuana scent would overwhelm the cooking scent, so you go at the scent first. So we always advise our handlers, once the task force officers find in the um, you find, and they tell them where to find and they locate, they, they take it out and have it, send the door in again. Because it was proven in the past, many handlers would have sent back the door, and they would have found something else. Now these dogs can find everything from drugs to guns to people. 
we presented two scenarios. First, there was a firearm hidden somewhere in the house. Then we presented a scenario where someone was hiding in the house. How responsive are persons when they, when they see the dogs to obeying the command of the officer in terms of to Most say stop where the drugs are, are, are they afraid to say what, what, what the, to see what the dog might then do? It depends on the individuals. Some will easily stop and respond to whatever instruction they may be getting. There are others who will try to run away, who will try to um, hide stuff at places where they believe the dogs will not find. The dogs will still find it. Get the nation's leading newspaper on the go by downloading the Digital Guardian app on your iOS or Android devices now and enjoy our special introductory subscription offer now on. The nation's first and best digital paper in an easy-to-read digital format. The Digital Guardian, Trinidad and Tobago's fastest-growing, most subscribed, and most read digital paper. Stay on top with the market leader and don't miss a beat in today's fast-paced world. Go to Apple Store or Google Play and download now. Oh my god. Come on, come on. Death in Paradise, Mondays at 8.30 p.m. and Wednesdays at 9 p.m. on CNC3. We've seen demonstrations where the canine officers discover firearms, narcotics, and even explosives. So we're going to put this to the test now. I'm wearing a glove because the first thing the dog is going to pick up is human scent and, um, well, any sort of smells or anything with regards to that. So this is a, a pack of, of um, narcotics. Um, so most of it is decriminalized right now. So I'm going to hide it in one of these cars and we're going to put um, RC to the test. So there are a number of cars here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, couple cars. So RC, RC is not aware of what car I'm going to put it in, of course. So we're going to sneak it into one of these long time drag cars and put it into the gas tank. Now, I would think that with the smell of the fuel and, and so on, it would put RC off. But um, this is a this is a true test. So this is a bag of narcotics. Stick that in there. making sure I'm not touching with this hand at all so that there's no human scent, there's no DNA from me at all on this gas tank. So let's put our seat to the test now and see whether or not these canine officers are true to form. Stop. Stop. Oh, so yeah. So because because through that glove, I think when I was 
when I was sweating, I changed, the, changed hands with marijuana. So there's uh, still a marijuana sent to me. So as he's picking that up. So I think, um, so what I need to do, I need to move clearly get like, okay. So clearly, you show that something is in the outside. Good boy! Ah, good boy! Good boy! Good boy! Who's a good boy? Ah, that's my baby! Good job, baby! So, as, as he's done a good job. Yes, he's done a good job. As he's done a good job, and of course, he's found me marijuana. I'm not gonna touch that again. Now we've seen how well these dogs can find contraband, but what are you most afraid of when you see a dog? Is it their nose? No. Their bite? More than likely their teeth, their size, their build. Hey officer, morning, morning, morning. How things, man? See you and your dog making that thing? Yeah, nice, nice. Everything good? Yeah. Right, right. I'll just take a little pass through there now. All right. Right? Okay. All right, I'll just stay up, stay up. Yeah, man. Notice something catches the eye of the officer. What is that? That arouses the suspicion of the officer. No, no, I good, no, I good, I have nothing here. I have nothing here. Big man, big man, don't touch me. Big man, don't touch me. Big man, don't touch me. Don't touch me, man. Notice an outcome, man. The dog will defend his handler. The tactical dogs. With outcome, man, will defend and they would bite. Same. Explosive canine you all saw before. This is the tactical aspect of it. So he has the bite capability. Notice the other dog, Tony. Away from the handler, does not move at all. This is the part I really wanted to do. I mean, I was really excited about it coming to the canine unit, but actually, when I, when I actually saw a demonstration between the dog actually going after a perpetrator, I, I punked out a little bit. Um, but then, you know, from the time they showed me what I needed to do, put on the arm shield, I um, realized the arm shield was pretty solid. Um, I got a little bit more um, brave, for lack of a better term. be on the other end of the you know seeing one of these animals charging at you was something that I was excited but at the same time I'll admit it I was petrified I was scared um, you know it's good dog lay sit do all of these things at one point but when that command comes and you see that dog your eyes roll back turning red charging at you rows of teeth it, 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 it's a whole other experience the dog out no! Out! Go! Get the nation's leading newspaper on the go by downloading the Digital Guardian app on your iOS or Android devices now and enjoy our special introductory subscription offer now on. The nation's first and best digital paper in an easy-to-read digital format. The Digital Guardian, Trinidad and Tobago's fastest-growing, most subscribed, and most read digital paper. Stay on top with the market leader and don't miss a beat in today's fast-paced world. Go to Apple Store or Google Play and download now. Thank you for staying with us, Eid Mubarak. I'm Robert Dumas, this is On Patrol. As promised, we're continuing our discussion on the four-legged officers of the TTPS. Once again, we are joined by Commander Sheldon Edgel and Superintendent Hospitalis, and two special guests from the K-9 unit. Gentlemen, good evening. Good evening, Robert. The K-9 officers, they're very obedient, they're amazing creatures. Um, I've witnessed the aggression firsthand. 
Um, in terms of the contribution the canine officers make to the TTPS, some might say they're even more valuable to the, um, shall we say for lack of a better term, human officers, in terms of their contribution to crime. Well, that has a lot to do with the, the skill sets of the, of the canines. Our canines do narcotic recovery, firearm recovery. They do tracking, tactical work, and explosive recovery. Um, the human would not detect some of these things by scent. The canines actually detect it by scent. And it is almost impossible to hide that scent from the canine. You mentioned we were talking about the value of these particular dogs. Seven million last year. Um, recovered in narcotics and illegal firearms. This year alone, we've almost passed that number. Um, would they wait? They are, they are. And, and the commissioner will always tell you that whenever he goes to England, there's a particular beagle that, that sorts him out when he's in England and, and sniffs around him. And that is one of the things the commissioner wants to include. So in the future, for the, the canine unit, we're also looking at, at putting dogs up at the airport, not only in the back where they search the luggage, but also in front. So, People come in to go away, they mm -hmm. departing passengers. The dogs will be there to, to sniff them before they get on the flight, sniff them when they arrive, sniff the baggage when they're lining up and so on. And we are hoping by that we would discourage people traveling with narcotics. Mm -hmm. And as you know, as you may know, that is a, a big issue when airports are- I don't travel with narcotics. Well, I don't no. know, do you? No. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, I'll, I'll ask the dogs to check. But it's, it's a thing when they do for international retail at airports and so on. Um, and we have to make sure that our security in the airports are, are up to scratch. And, and that is what the commission is hoping that we get to. So what sort of service time do you get out of the dogs and what happens to the dogs um, when, when they seemingly have to retire? We can get, depending on the dog, because we usually, we usually purchase dogs around the age between three and five years old. If we can get a dog early at closer to one, two years, it is better for us to prepare that dog, to train that dog. Once trained, you can get anywhere between five, 15, 20 years from the dog, depending on the dog. Once that dog has to retire, what we, we do, we, we usually do, we offer that dog to the handler, mm -hmm. so that the handler can adopt the dog. Because this dog would have worked with that particular handler for years, so they have built a bond. To give the canine to another person can have a negative effect. So you offer first the handler, and most, in most instances, the handler will take the dog. They officially adopt the dog. Well, the canine officers um, have a number, and um, the, we, I also understand that to harm a, a canine officer is equivalent to harming a police officer. Yes. Um, what sort of protection is given to the dogs once they're deployed? When our okay, canines are deployed with the handlers, most times the handler and the dog has to, they are focused on what they are doing, especially when we're looking at narcotics and firearms. So we have additional officers to provide cover because the officer, the handler dealing with the dog cannot focus elsewhere. He has to focus and control the dog what he wants the dog to do. So we usually have other officers provide them with the cover right. so that they will be safe in doing what they're supposed to but do. But have you ever lost any dogs in the field? Within, I mean, not just within your eight months, in terms of the history of the canine unit? I believe one. I believe we have lost one in the past. I, can't, I don't have any information on it, but I, from my information, we have lost one. Are there any plans to breed some of these dogs so that we, have the, the, we continue with the, the, to maintain the pedigree? Yes, actually, Rob, what we do, and, and um, what we have done in the past is dogs were bought in from away. But they were very expensive and costly um, to bring in and ship, and, but uh, I think the commissioner has, has directed uh, Mr. Hospitalis to look at options. And I think we have two options we look at, whether we breed internally, as well as we look at uh, purchasing from the local, um, the local kennels. So if we, can bring, if we can bring Rico on the set. Thank you for staying with us. I'm Robert Dumas. This is On Patrol, Constable Romeo and his canine officer dog, Rico. Constable. Thanks for having us. Yes, this is um, Kinai Rico. This is where we can be 
Well, that's our show tonight. Thanks to officers Edgil and Hospitalis for joining us again. And a special thank you to Rico and Constable Romeo. The on-patrol team has gotten very close with the mounted and canine branch over the last two weeks. We've seen the horses. Now we're seeing just how valuable the dogs are. These four-legged officers keep us safe every day when they're on patrol. I'm Robert Dumas. See you next week.